Hello, good evening in Salam Malaysia Madani. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shuhaida Arifin and you're watching News at 10. In our top stories tonight. Five highways to use open payment systems by September. Giant multinational companies urge to help with the TVET funding. Yang di-Pertuan Agong Al-Sultan Abdul Lari Ayatuddin Al-Mustafa Bila Shah hopes that Malaysia and Singapore can expand their collaborations in new and emerging areas such as digital economy, green economy and food security. As both countries have always shared a strong and close relationship, Al-Sultan Abdullah firmly believed that the strong bond of friendship among Malaysians and Singaporeans would continue to be an important factor forming the core of bilateral ties. Regular exchanges of high-level visits among our leaders and between officials of our countries will help in building mutual understanding and the trust between us. Throughout the history of our economic cooperation, Singapore has consistently remained as one of our top trading partners, with Singapore being Malaysia's second largest trading partner, and likewise, Malaysia being Singapore's second largest training, trading partner. As founding members of the ASEAN, His Majesty also said Malaysia and Singapore must continue to work closely in promoting the region's stability and security and making ASEAN a dynamic regional grouping. Al-Sultan Abdullah said this at a state banquet in honour of Singapore President Halima Yaakob and her delegation at Istana Negara. Raja Pemaisuri Agong Tunku Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandariah was in attendance. Meanwhile, Halimah in her speech said Singapore and Malaysia as founding members of ASEAN and like-minded partners must help the region remain united and credible. According to her, this is crucial because the external environment is becoming increasingly volatile and challenging, with major power rivalries sharpening the global economic outlook remaining uncertain due to the war in Ukraine and the long aftershocks of COVID-19. Without a stable external environment, all of us in ASEAN will find it harder to transform our economies and improve the lives of our peoples. I'm confident that Singapore and Malaysia can work together to advance both our national as well as ASEAN's interests. She said as Singapore and Malaysia share an intertwined destiny, what Singapore and Malaysia can achieve together is only limited by both countries' imagination and political will. Earlier, Halima was accorded a state welcome at Istana Negara in conjunction with her maiden three-day visit to Malaysia, which began yesterday. Five highways nationwide will begin implementing an open payment system by September. Works Minister Dato Sri Alexander Nantalingi said this new toll collection system will allow road users to pay toll charges using debit and credit cards. The five highways are the Sungai Besi Expressway, the Ampang Kuala Lumpur Elevated Highway, the New Pantai Expressway, the Gatri Corridor Expressway and the Penang Bridge. In a statement on Facebook, the minister said discussions and planning among relevant parties, including highway concessionaires, have been made since the beginning of this year. The implementation of this system is among the early initiatives towards the transition to the multi-lane free flow MLFF, which is currently underway. This will open up more opportunities for e-wallet providers to participate and end the monopoly by touch and go. All major kereta api tanah Melayu berhad KTMB stations must be equipped with lifts within one year. Transport Minister Anthony Lok Siu Fook in issuing this order said frequent public complaints that the lack of lifts at commuter stations had inconvenient travellers, especially persons with disabilities, senior citizens and pregnant women. 
Ini memang feedback yang selalu saya terima daripada penumpang. Uh, khususnya wanita yang mengandung uh, warga emas OKU amat menyusahkan apabila mereka menggunakan uh, 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 perkhidmatan komputer. Jadi memang hasrat kita ialah menambah baik uh, kemudahan-kemudahan ini di stesen-stesen KTM komputer. Jadi ini sasaran yang saya letakkan kepada kepada pihak AEC supaya cepatkan proses uh, untuk uh, menyediakan lift-lift ini di stesen-stesen besar yang belum ada lift. Speaking when launching the Railway Assets Intelligence System Rails mobile app, which was developed by the Railway Assets Corporation RAC. Lok said RAC had been directed to prepare an audit report together with KTMB for urgent submission to the Ministry regarding stations which should be given priority in the provision of facilities. The public are encouraged to continue taking safe public health measures during the upcoming fasting month to protect themselves, their families and the community. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said while attending activities such as Trawe prayers in mosques, religious talks and breaking fast events, people should keep in mind that COVID-19 and other viruses such as influenza are still present. The public health measures that can be taken include wearing a face mask, especially in crowded or congested areas, washing hands frequently after handshakes, or keeping sanitizers handy and practicing proper coughing and sneezing etiquette. Congregants are encouraged to bring their own praying mat and prayer garment for women, while individuals with symptoms are encouraged to practice self-risk assessment tests and avoid being in public areas. The health DG also advised the public to practice a healthy and balanced diet during fasting to ensure optimal health and also to improve the body's defense system against diseases, especially COVID-19. On the latest status on COVID-19, Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham said the number of new cases from 12 to 18 March recorded an increase of 18% to 1,848 cases. The public health measures that can be taken include wearing a face mask, especially in crowded or congested areas, washing hands frequently after handshakes or keeping sanitizers handy and practicing proper coughing and sneezing etiquette. Now moving on to the next news, the Court of Appeal today allowed Datin Sri Rosmah Mansur's application for temporary release of her passport to enable her to travel to Singapore to visit her daughter and a grandson who's unwell. A three-member panel of judges comprising justices, Datuk Sri Kamaluddin Mat Said, Datuk Hadariah Said Ismail and Datuk Azman Abdullah made the decision after Deputy Public Prosecutor Po Yi Tin did not object to her application. Justice Datuk Suri Kamaluddin said that since there was no objection by the prosecution to the application, the court unanimously granted the order in terms. Earlier, Datuk Suri Rosma's lawyer, Datuk Jagjit Singh, informed the court that the wife of a former Prime Minister, Datuk Suri Najib Turaza, sought a leave of the court for the release of her international passport to enable her to travel to Singapore to visit her daughter, her son-in-law and two grandchildren of whom one is unwell. He said she will be leaving for Singapore on 23rd March and will be in the Republic for six weeks, as well as spending the Hari Raya celebration there before returning on 5th May. Datin Sri Rosma's passport was impounded by the court in 2019 after she was charged with corruption and was evidently found guilty. The High Court, however, granted Datin Sri Rosma a stay of execution of the prison sentence and fine pending her appeal at the Court of Appeal. A petrol station owner was fined 40,000 ringgit by the Johor Bahru Sessions Court today for allowing a vehicle with a phone registration number to be filled with 195 petrol at the station four years ago. Judge Dato Cik Wan Zaidi Cik Wan Ibrahim meted out the fine in default of five months in jail against Pan Chip Chan 59 who pleaded guilty to the charge. This is said to be the first case involving the offence to be brought to court. Fan was charged with failing to comply with the ban on the sale of Raw 95 petrol to foreign registered vehicles. 
he had allowed a foreign registered BMW car to fill up 54 litres of Raw 95 petrol worth 114 ringgit and 30 cent at the petrol station in Jalan Tunabdur Razak, Susur 4 at 10.40 a.m. on 13 May 2019. In doing so, the father of two children had violated Regulation 12A of the Control of Supplies Regulations 1974. Earlier, Deputy Public Prosecutor Raja No Iklas told the court that Fan had been previously given a compound notice for a similar offence and requested for appropriate punishment to be imposed as a lesson to him as well as other petrol station owners in the country. On a related note, Johor Domestic Trade and Cost of Living Director Lilis Saslinda Pornomo informed that the media, the department is currently investigating another 22 cases of raw 95 sales to foreign vehicles. Selalunya kes-kes tu banyaknya sebab apa dia memang target selalunya ada mengisi minyak tu di kawasan negeri uh, bersempadan. Which is dalam tu dah kenapa kita memang closely monitor, kita punya pot kuasa memang akan turun dan fokus utama kita kepada yang maknanya kata 50 kilometer ataupun dekat dengan radius berhampiran dengan sepadan Malaysia Singapura. Hinta. She said this when met by reporters at the court lobby. She also said a total of six petrol station owners have also been given total compound notices with 10,000 ringgit for the same offence from January to 20th March of this year. Coming up, Kazana posts 1.6 billion ringgit operating profit. Prime Minister Dato Suri Anwar Ibrahim today called on 60 giant and multinational companies to help cover the funding of technical and vocational education and training TVAT in the country. The Premier said the approach will give opportunity for the companies to help the Raya through takeover, maintenance and training. Dalam perundingan kita dengan uh, Tansi Syed Mokhtar, kita beri jaminan untuk membantu uh, dalam projek-projek infrastruktur yang berlaku terlibat yang besar. Uh, itu pertama. Keduanya, setakat ini ada senarai 60 syarikat-syarikat agregasi -syarikat uh, termasuk multinasional yang diminta uh, menampung pembiayaan TVET. Ya. Jadi dia ambil alih sebahagian dan uh, membantu menyelenggara melatih dengan kos syarikat. Among the companies involved are Telecom Malaysia and Al Bukhari Group. Other companies called upon are Sunway Berhad, Berjaya Corporation Berhad and companies registered with the Associated Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Malaysia ACCCIM. The proposal to allow employees provident fund EPF members to use their savings as collateral for bank loans does not breach Section 51 of the EPF Act. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim said this method of applying for bank loans would not jeopardize the interests of EPF members. Tentunya, dari segi penasihat undang-undang, KWSP dan Peguam Negara telah dirojok dan tidak ada percanggahan uh, dengan Seksyen 51. Walau bagaimanapun, dari sudut um, jaminan uh, kepentingan uh, peminjam, itu dipelihara. Umpamanya, uh, tidak ada uh, dividen akan diteruskan. Walaupun dia beri cagaran, uh, umpamanya RM50,000 itu uh, sebagai uh, pinjaman, tetapi dividen itu akan diberikan sepenuh ikut kumpulan asal. Jadi tidak dipotong. Jadi oleh demikian, KWSP merasakan dalam beberapa tahun pulangan itu dapat diperoleh. Maka kalaulah ada beberapa jumlah kecil yang tidak yang gagal membayar, dia tidak mengesankan parah kerana jumlah induk dan dividen sudah ditambah dari potongan mungkin dari dari, dari sudut, sudut dividen. Jadi risiko itu bagi kalau paham saya sangat minimal. On 9th March, Datuk Seri Anwar announced that the government has agreed to allow EPF members to withdraw funds to use as a collateral for bank loans. 
A total of 4.1 billion ringgit can be saved through the implementation of targeted electricity subsidy for half a year in 2023. Deputy Finance Minister Stephen Sim said the actual cost of the subsidy to maintain the current electricity tariff, if fully implemented, would reach 14.9 billion ringgit. According to him, with a targeted subsidy, the total cost would only be 10.8 billion ringgit. melalui pemberian subsidi bill elektrik secara bersasar pada separuh tahun 2023 apabila sebahagian pelepasan kos-kos tidak seimbang ataupun dengan izin Tan Sri imbalance cost pass through ICPT dilepaskan kepada pengguna-pengguna yang menggunakan bekalan elektrik berwotan sederhana dan tinggi terutamanya daripada kalangan industri termasuk perbadanan multinasional Meanwhile, Sim said the government was studying the implementation of targeted subsidies for diesel. Hazanah Nasional Berhad recorded a higher profit from operation of 1.6 billion ringgit in the financial year 2022 compared with 670 million ringgit in financial year 2021 despite the challenging and volatile global markets. Managing Director Dato Amirul Faisal Wan Zahir said the better profit performance was mainly contributed by monetization activities and lower impairment in the portfolio. He said that there are ongoing concern that the inflationary environment and tightening monetary conditions will lead to a global recession exacerbated by continuing geopolitical risks. However, Dr. Amirul Faisal said Khazanah's disciplined investment approach helped navigate the volatility in the market as the sovereign wealth fund maintained discipline in its value creation and monetization efforts. This was mainly because of um, uh, in, uh, gains from investment portfolio divestments, as well as the lower impairment that we experienced in 2022. Uh, we paid a dividend of 500 million uh, last year, and our balance sheet, as I mentioned to you before, remains uh, resilient as we go along. He said this at a media briefing on Khazanah's 2022 financial performance today. Going into 2023, Dato Amirul Faisal said Khazanah expects volatility across the global market would continue, including in Malaysia, citing ring shots might come in the form of China's reopening and moderating inflation levels. Coming up in our foreign segment, Dabney Review finds London police institutionally racist and sexist. Thailand will hold elections on May 14th. The national poll body said today, a day after parliament was dissolved. Election Commission Secretary General Sawang Boon Mi at a news conference said early voting will take place on 7th May. Bunmi also said that candidate registration, including for party nominees for Prime Minister, will take place in early April. The announcement comes as parties set up campaigning for a nationwide electoral contest that is shaping up to be a battle between a pro-military conservative grouping led by the incumbent Prime Minister Prai chan cha against the largest opposition, Piu Thai Party, led by billionaire Shinawatra family. Piu Thai is expected to hold events daily across Thailand featuring the daughter of a former Prime Minister, Taksin Sinawatra, Pe Tong Tan, who has stopped opinion polls as a potential candidate for Premier. London's Metropolitan Police is institutionally racist, misogynistic and homophobic and unable to police itself. An independent review said today, heaping pressure on the Manta new chief to reform Britain's biggest police force. The review was commissioned by the then head of the Met, Cressida Dick, in 2021 after a serving officer was sentenced to life in prison for the rape and murder of a young woman, Sarah Everard, in a case that shocked the country and put a spotlight on the force of broader world culture. Louise Cassie, who led the review and is a member of a parliament upper house, found severe failings across the Met that required radical reform. The findings come more than two decades after a 1999 inquiry into the murder of a black teenager, Stephen Lawrence identified institutional racism within the force. 
Prime Minister Rishi Sunak also said that trust in the police had been hugely damaged. The 360-page report said the force needed strong leadership, a women's protection service and a new children's strategy, among other recommendations, for reform. Italian police today said they discovered a haul of illegal drugs in packaging decorated with the faces of fearsome bosses of the Sicilian Mafia. Carabinieri police said in a statement that about 200,000 euros worth of hash, marijuana and cocaine were seized from a warehouse in Marsala, Western Sicily. Among them, officers found packs of hash wrapped in cellophane and bearing pictures of Matteo Messina Denaro, Totorina and the fictional Godfather movie character. Messina Denaro was the Sicilian Mafia's highest profile fugitive until his arrest in January, while Rina, who died in prison in 2017, was the Sicilian Mafia's boss of bosses. Both men have been sentenced to multiple life terms for a series of brutal murders, including in Messina Denaro's case, the killing of a teenager whose body was dissolved in acid. Today's police raid took place in the Sicilian province of Trapani, where Messina Denario is believed to have spent most of his time on the run, protected by family and clan loyalties. A 28-year-old man with no criminal records seen leaving the warehouse was arrested on drug-related charges after officers found 50 grams of pure cocaine in one of his pockets. Coming up in sports, Damo all set for full-season Moto3 debut in Portuguese GP. The combination of Brazilian-born players Paulo Josu and Andrik Dos Santos is expected to give a touch of samba flair to the national squad when they face Turkmenistan at the Sultan Ismail Stadium on Thursday. Josu said he's looking forward to linking up with Dos Santos in midfield, but will leave it to head coach Kim Pangon to decide. The match will be the first of two Tier 1 international friendlies Harimau Malaya will play over the next week. They will face Hong Kong on 28th March also at Stadium Sultan Ismail. He's a high intensity. Also the facilities from Johor, we can have a good, good atmosphere for training. Everything is fine here. And uh, definitely he's have a high intensity training. He likes to press, he likes to make a faster transition. I think it's combined a lot with the Malaysian players. There's a lot of uh, faster players, especially on the side. Arif Aima, Akia Hashid, Faisal Halim, all of them is uh, faster players. So I think it is, it's match the coach's plan, the coaching style with these players over here. The Kuala Lumpur City captain added that he's looking forward to donning national colours for the first time as a naturalised player. Josu is also expecting a tough match against Turkmenistan and does not think much can be drawn from past encounters with them. Sharifuddin Azman, Malaysia's sole representative at the Motorcycle Grand Prix MotoGP World Championship this year, is set to make his full-season Moto3 debut at the Portuguese GP this weekend. The 21-year-old rider, who is popularly known as Damo, was pleased with his progress during the three-day official test last weekend at the Algarve International Circuit in Portimao, where the 21-round 2023 season will ref off. Damo, who will be racing with Spanish outfit Empty Helmets MSI, said the team had made significant improvements to their KTM bike setup and lap times since the first day of testing. Damo's best placing during the test was 10th placing in free practice FP8, clocking 1 minute 47.778 seconds, which is an improvement from 1 minute 52.068 seconds he clocked en route to a 19th placing in the first practice. Damo, who made his maiden appearance in Moto3 as a wildcard rider in the 2021 Arrogant GP, had four more wildcard entries last year, namely in the Portugal, Spain, Catalonia and Malaysia GPS. National obstacle course athlete Mohamed Reda Roslan is determined to strike goal in the Cambodia Sea Games in May after having to settle for three silvers in the 2019 edition in the Philippines. The 34-year-old, better known as Mat Reda, believes he is better prepared this time after undergoing gym training with obstacles courses compared to four years ago. 
Matreda said although the obstacles at the training centre are not the same as the ones in Cambodia during the 5th to 17 May Sea Games, the national team have been hard at work after receiving information from the organisers regarding the measurements and types of obstacles to be used. In the Philippines, Matreda backed to silver in the men's 100m, 400m team relay and 400m team assist events. Matt Redo, who won the 2018 Ninja League Challenge and CL by defeating American Ninja Warrior Champion Jack Murray, said the national squad are expected to undergo a two-week centralized training camp in the Philippines next week as part of their preparation of the SEA Games in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. This time, the National Obstacle Course Race Team are targeting goal in the men's 100-meter individual and team events and a podium finish in the women's 100-meter team event. Meanwhile, women athlete Yip Hui Tang, 32, admitted to facing a little difficulty adjusting to the shorter distance, having competed in the longer distance in the previous edition. Last time I actually doing for long distance, so I do a lot of running, like like endurance running. But then for this time, it's actually a speed course. It's a 100 meter course. So the training wise is a bit different from last time. So this time we'll be doing a lot of sprinting. And then we're doing two sessions um, back to back in a day. So we have morning session and then uh, evening session. So if a morning session most probably will be going for running as well. And then evening time we'll be going for conditioning for uh, obstacles and then strength training. All right, so that concludes this evening's news at 10. In our top story, five highways to use open payment systems by September. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Stay tuned to Salunam Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening.